Hi, we're going to take the back off a yoga chair. First, it's a good idea to have gloves. The edges of the chair are jagged after the back has been removed. So to keep from cutting yourself, have some good leather gloves handy. First step, take some vice grips. Grab the back of the chair and force the back of the chair away from the, t the tube on the back of the chair to create a little crack. Do that on both sides. Be careful not to scrape the end of the vice grips on the chair seat. Okay, so we've got a little crack on both sides. Next step, take a large screwdriver. This is a Sears Craftsman 3 8 inch screwdriver. See it's very large. Wedge it in the crack and start to pry the back of the chair away from the tube. Be careful not to dent the tube of the chair or to scratch the back of the, uh, the chair when you're doing this, so take it easy. Just gently create a little crack in there. Sometimes the back comes off very easy, sometimes it takes a while. I'm going to go all the way through this. So just take it as it goes. Okay, I've got a little bit off there. We just keep working our way around. Wedge the screwdriver in. When you hear that loud pop, don't worry about it. It usually does that. Nothing is uh, being broken. It's just loud. Loud pop. It's normal. Okay. And what's happening, those loud noises are the welds breaking. The back is spot welded onto the back tube of the chair. When you pry it off, the weld breaks, and that's what the loud noise comes from. Okay. So we're making our way around the chair. We've got most of the back off. Again, this is another part where it's good to have the gloves. This, the back of the chair is sharp. You want to be able to grab onto it. And there's jagged edges from the weld sticking out here. Sometimes it's good to have a smaller screwdriver too when the going gets a little bit harder and you can't, and the, the crack between the back of the chair and the tube isn't showing yet. Sometimes it's good to have a medium sized screwdriver and just dig it in there to create the crack. I'm not doing that now. I've managed to get the crack without it. And then we'll take this last little piece off. Almost there. Okay, the back is off. So we can set our screwdriver aside. Um, so the big part, that's the main thing I wanted to show you. The rest of the process uh, is you can take a pair of needle nose pliers if you have big jagged edges left on the chair, big pieces of the weld, and um, you don't want to spend the time filing them down. Sometimes it's faster to take some needle nose pliers and just grab onto them and twist them off. Save yourself a little bit of filing time. Um, this one came off pretty clean so I'm not even going to need to do that. So the rest of the process is just filing the tube of the chair down, filing these jagged uh, weld leavings 
off of the back of the chair and then uh, cleaning, cleaning the, the top tube of the chair and painting it. To file the chair down, I use three different files. I use a six inch flat file at first to file the welds down. This is a coarser uh, texture file, so it removes the metal of the welds faster. The weld material is actually pretty soft and comes off pretty quickly with these files. So again, this is a Nicholson brand 6 inch flat file. You can get these at um, Home Depot, probably a lot of other places. Okay, then I take, usually I take the round file here, a 6 inch Nicholson round file. And I, after I get the welds down further, just to get the welds closer to the diameter of the main tube, this I found works very well for that. You can narrow, you can you can zero in right on a weld, and um, get that taken care of. And then finally, after I've got the weld pretty well down, I will go over it once again with the flat file to get a uniform. Uh, finish on the area I've been filing and then I'll take a mill file, a Nicholson brand 6 inch mill file and go over the tube until it's nice and smooth. Try and get it um, almost as smooth as the outside of the tube so that when someone's bare hand is on there and they're doing their yoga exercises, their yoga postures, there won't be any distraction from uh, rough spots or uneven spots on the chair. You can't get it perfect most of the time, but you can get it pretty good. So I take this mill file and I do the, the finishing work with that. I file it down and then feel it with my fingers, my bare fingers, until it's good and smooth. And I take some uh, solvent, um, some paint thinner, and clean the back of the chair. Um, because there's all this bare metal exposed here now. And then I paint it. Um, this chair, this is a folding metal chair. I got it at Staples. Um, it's Miko brand, um, which is a good brand because they don't have a crossbar between the front legs. And that is helpful for some yoga poses. Um, it's buff in color. And I have found that um, Krylon Fusion brand paint in the River Rock color is a good match for this beige buff color. And also it does not require a primer, so that's been a very workable solution for me. So that's how you make a yoga chair. After you paint it, you just let it dry for about a day, and you're done.